Okay, now that he's mostly groomed, he was out last night, um, we'll get started. We're going to talk about bits today, and we're going to talk about the seven, the seven pressure points on a horse's head that a bit can put pressure, and help you understand how to pick bits and select bits for your horse and what each bit does. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with telling you about the seven pressure points on a horse's head that a bit can put pressure. There's the nose, which is one, right across the nose. Corners of the mouth is number two. The bars of the mouth is number three. That's the spot on the gum where there's no teeth. The tongue is number four. The top of the mouth is five. The chin under here is six. And the pole up at the top is number seven. So that's the seven possible points that a bit can put pressure. They don't always put pressure on all seven points. Uh, some of them just one or two, some of them is four or five points. I want you to understand each pressure point and what that does and what how that pressure point affects the force. And when you understand that, you're gonna have an easier time selecting a bit for your horse. I hear all the time about bits being mild and harsh, and to some extent that's true, but you can take the most mild bit and make a horse's mouth bleed. So it's really not totally true. Think, instead of thinking of bits as from mild to harsh, think of them as simple to complex. So if a horse, or if a bit only works on the horse, say on the nose and nothing else, that would be a more simple bit. If you have a bit that works on the chin, the corners of the mouth, the bars, the roof of the mouth, and the pole all at the same time, that's gonna be a more complex bit. So instead of thinking of bits as mild to harsh, think of them as simple to complex. When you start a horse, a lot of people will start in a snaffle bit or in a halter or a side pull, something like that, because those are simple bits. They only work on one or two points on the horse's head. Um, let's start with showing you a rope side pull. I have one right here. Basically, this is just a roving what, uh, rope that would go over the top of the horse's nose. So that would be a simple bit or simple bridle, even though it doesn't go on the horse's face. It's a simple piece of equipment because it only works on that one part. Now, you can have, like this one is woven rope, so it has some texture to it. Or you could have something smooth. You can have a halter, which is just one rope. You can have knots on the halter, which you see sometimes. And all of that changes the pressure that the horse feels. It is still all nose pressure, but the different textures are different, different amounts of pressure on the nose. So what would that do with the horse? Well, the pressure on the nose is real good to get the horse to bend laterally when they're learning how to be ridden, uh, it's pretty basic. You would pull on one side, the head comes this way. You pull on the other side, the head comes that way. That's why you see um, bits that affect the nose a lot of times on young horses, horses that are just being started, because that's about the most simple bit that you can use, the most simple tack. I call it a bit, but it's a bridle and it affects the nose. So. The texture affects how what the horse feels, but it still only bends, mainly bends the horse lateral. You can get a little bit more done. You can get a little bit broke at the pole, but uh, it's mainly lateral bending. So let's go on to uh, the corners of the mouth. So the corners of the mouth are the lips right here, and a bit just about any any bit that goes in the horse's mouth is going to affect the corners of the mouth now you can take like a snaffle bit like this 
it's going to sit in his mouth and it'll affect the corners of the mouth right here. So like this is a, a D-ring snaffle. When you pull on one side, that side is gonna pull on the corners of his mouth. That's still pretty simple. Um, this, this bit also gets into making contact with the bars of his mouth, which the bars, step back up here. The bars are the part of his mouth on his gums where there's no teeth. You see that? That part where there's no teeth. So that's the bars. <laughs> that's the bars of his mouth. And a snaffle bit is going to make contact with the corners of his mouth, the bars, and a little bit on the tongue. Not too much, but a little bit. So that's a more complex bit than just going around the nose, but it's still a pretty basic bit pretty simple bit. And what that's gonna do, you can get a lot done with the snaffle bit. When you're pulling to the side, you can get his head to come to the side. You can also get a little bit of his nose coming in if you make contact with both of them. That'll bring his chin in just a little bit. And it's all direct one-to-one -one contact. However much you pull, that's what the horse feels on his mouth. So you can vary that contact by going with a smooth mouth bit. You can go with a bit with some sort of texture. Um, some of them have like a twisted wire around the mouthpiece that'll give it texture. Or the bit could actually be a, a, a wire that's been twisted and that would give it texture. So different textures will give the horse a different feel. Now, also, the diameter of the bit is going to give a different feel. So if you have a larger bit, that's going to spread that pressure out to a larger space on the horse's mouth. So that's going to give him a different feel where if you have a real tiny bit, all your pressure is going to be condensed down into one spot. So that's going to give uh, more contact. That's going to give the horse a different feel. So, that pretty much covers uh, non-leverage bits. We're going to start talking about some leverage bits next and why you would go into a leverage bit, why you would not go into a leverage bit. Um, I want to say I hear, I hear a lot of people say that my horse does not like a particular bit. Horses cannot, horses don't have the mind capacity to like or not like a bit. They might not like the contact that the bit does, or they might not like the control over their body that the bit gives you. It's not so much that they don't like the bit. Now, if you have a snaffle bit on the horse and you're pulling his head to the side, you're gonna get lateral flexation and you're gonna get that horse softer laterally and you can get a little bit vertically. And depending on what you're wanting your horse to do, that might be enough. You might want control, you can get control over the shoulders with a leverage bit. You can get control over the pole. You can get control over the neck. And we're gonna talk about how leverage bits do that. And like I said, a horse doesn't have the capacity to like or not like a bit. He also might not like a bit because you're making him use his body in a way that he wants to be lazy. And it's kind of like if the doctor tells me I need to go on a diet, I'm not gonna like it, but that doesn't mean it's not good for me. Same way with the horse. If you have a horse that's traveling real heavy on his front end, and that's gonna cause problems in the front end, it could cause feet problems, it could cause back problems. So in that situation, you would want to go to a leverage bit that's going to help him to elevate his shoulders and engage his back. So even though he might not like it because it's making him use his body like he needs to, he still needs that. So let's talk about a couple of leverage bits. We'll start with this one. This is a basic leverage bit. 
It has a curb chain on the back. Now, the curb chain is gonna put pressure under the chin. Now you can vary this pressure by either having smaller lengths on the chain or bigger lengths on the chain. If your horse is resistant to that pressure under the chin, you can adjust that pressure with the curb chain. Uh, you can also go to a leather curb strap. I'll show you a bridle in a minute that has a leather strap on it. Now this bit is going to put pressure on the chin, going to put pressure on the pole, going to put a little bit of pressure on the mouth, the bars, and the corner of the mouth. And all of that depends on how you pull with your hands because you're not going to get the same pressure every time you pull. So what this bit is going to do, this bit is going to start to soften him at the pole, being a leverage bit, the chin strap is the fulcrum of your lever. And when it rotates, when your bit rotates, you have contact under the chin and you have contact on the top of the pole. So that's where you cut where it becomes a leverage bit. Now, when you make that contact and rotate the bit, you're putting pressure on the corners of the mouth, you put pressure on the chin, uh, the bars, and the pole. So if your horse doesn't like or isn't used to a leverage bit, he's not gonna know what to do with all that pressure. He's gonna get one, two, three, four, five things that he's being told at the same time. So if your horse is resistant to pole pressure, if he's resistant to pressure under the chin, if he's resistant to pressure on the corners of the mouth, he's gonna show that in that bit with that resistance. What you have to do is go back and identify where that resistance is coming from and then fix that resistance. Any resistance is just a hole in your training. Most any horse that I have that I trained, I can put just about any bit on the horse. It really doesn't matter because I've eliminated all the resistance on all seven pressure points. So when you get all the resistance eliminated in each pressure point and you're bringing that horse through a progression of bits, you're controlling his body and making him use himself correctly. So this particular bit right here, being a leverage bit, it has a low port. What this bit is gonna do, it's gonna start by putting pressure at the pole. So it's gonna let me lower his pole a little bit and bring his nose in. In the process of doing that, that's gonna get him to elevate his shoulders a little bit and make his neck a little bit rounder and lift his back up. So this bit is gonna be the beginning of teaching him how to carry his front end a little bit lighter and engage his back end. So that's what I'm gonna use this bit for, is to get the horse a little bit rounder. And as he progresses through training, I want more control of his shoulders, more control of his pole. So as I would progress him through Different bits, this bit might be the next one I would go to. And if you notice, there's not that much difference in it. I think this is the same curb chain that's on the other one, but you notice the port is a little bit different. So, what this bit is going to do different, it's going to put less pressure right here on the, on the tongue and it's gonna put basically the same amount of pressure on the bars and the corners of the mouth. So if I have a horse that I need, so let's say he has a thick tongue, and with that bit that we just had, because his tongue was thick, it was putting too much pressure on his tongue, this would put less pressure on his tongue. And this bit is also going to help to elevate his back, Break it to fall and then get it. So let's say I have a horse that's actually lazy. He's wanting to carry himself really heavy on the front end, and I'm really having a hard time getting him to engage in the back end. 
this is going to be contradictory to what a lot of them would think, I would take a really lazy horse and I would actually put a bit on him that has a taller port so that I make contact with the roof of his mouth. What that's going to do, that is going to give me more leverage to get him to break his pole and elevate his back. So don't think of the bit as being more harsh. It is a bit that's going to allow me to put pressure on him to make him use his body correctly. Now you also notice on this one it has a leather curb strap instead of a curb chain. So what that's going to do, it gives me equal pressure under his chin and that adds the, the fulcrum of my leverage point. So I'm going to show you I'm going to show you another bit. And what this bit is, it's kind of similar in that it has a leather curve strap. This bit has a basic port. If you have a horse with a low roof of his mouth, this would be tall enough to make contact with the roof of his mouth. A lot of horses, this is not going to make contact, so that depends on the horse. <clears throat> has a roller right here that he can play with with his tongue and it actually has rollers right here on the bars. So this is going to, this is actually a really simple bit for the horse as far as the pressure comes slow, the contact comes slow, and when the horse feels the contact, and when the horse feels the contact, it's easy for them to understand because of the pose. This is also going to put pressure up on the, the pole, the corners of the mouth, the bars, the tongue, maybe the roof of the mouth, depending on the horse, and the chin. So what I'm wanting to get after in all this, the point I want to make, is that you should get your horse soft and respectful of all seven of the pressure points. To say that my horse does not like pressure to the pole or does not like pressure on the roof of the mouth, that just means that that is a opening, a hole in your training that, has, that needs to be fixed. Because every one of these pressure points is going to make the horse do something different with his body going to give you control to make the horse use his body correctly. <clears throat> Even though you may not need all of those pressure points at one time, you might need to fix a certain thing. Let's say your horse is coming up sore in his back. Well, the first thing a lot of people think of is checking the saddle fit. And that's probably a good thing to check first. But if the horse is carrying himself hollowed out in the back end with a lot of weight on the front end, you fix those muscles, you tone those muscles up by using a bit that's going to help him to elevate his back. So instead of thinking of bits as being mild to harsh, think of them as being simple to complex. And every pressure point has a purpose and your horse should know how to operate off of that pressure point. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are, are anti-bit. All they want to use is side poles and uh, hackamore. And that, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, except that that's eliminating you to one tool. And any good horse person should have more than one tool and you should have other tools that you should go to in your toolbox to accomplish what you need with your horse. So that's it for today on bits. I hope this helps you understand how bits work and why you need different bits on your horse. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments box below. And until next time, thank you for watching.